So we had those prophecies hanging over Alabama for a decade, between a decade and actually 20 years. And in 2018, uh, I had a dream, January 3rd, 2018, and in the dream, Chuck was in the dream, and uh, I was on a platform and I was exchanging mantles with other ministers, and a man stood before me, I didn't recognize him or know him, and I just knew he was of Latin descent, and the Lord said, this man's name is Ed Silvoso, and you're going to have a spiritual exchange with him. So I woke up and wrote that name down phonetically, like, Ed Silvoso, who in the world? Did God give me a name? And, uh, of course, I woke up the next morning and thought, I think God gave me a name. And, of course, thank God for Google. And what could Paul the Apostle have done with Google, right? I mean, I, so I hit Google, and sure enough, there he is, a real man being used in transformation of cities, especially in uh, South America. So all I knew to do was call Chuck because Chuck was in the dream. And Chuck says, of course, can I know Ed? We've been in a relationship for years through Peter Wagner. Here's his cell number. Call him. I did. And he visited us uh, and basically gave us what I believe an apostolic doctrine or download of ecclesia. What it kind of meant to not be in the four walls of the church, but to actually go into the spheres of society. And that the church was not destined to live within walls, but to leaven the dough of society with the kingdom culture and concepts. So our first step to step really out, we've always had a heart, but this gave us a language. And so we were looking for a strategy. You know, sometimes we get these prophecies and Chuck and these these wonderful prophets are prophesying, but what I think our responsibility is then is find the strategy that God wants to give you to walk out these prophecies that has been spoken over us. And so we felt like we had somewhat of a language now with the language of ecclesia I'll share with you in a moment. But our first step was we stepped out of our church in 1961. This was in 2018. In 1961, they burnt the bus there in the Freedom Rider movement. That was burnt in our city. We we slashed the tires and burnt the bus and almost killed those Freedom Riders. And so we realized that road connects our city to our church. And we realized that God was saying something very significant and we were to join. So we rallied our city outside of our church. We had Baptists and Catholics and Presbyterians and white and black and Hispanic and Asians and Republicans and Democrats. And we marched that road and had our officials make decrees and declarations over our city and begin to not only repent but to declare and decree that God would begin to move supernaturally in our city. When we did that, something shifted in our city. And all of a sudden, we began to find favor in a supernatural way. We met the sheriff of our county on that march. First thing he said, would you consider pastoring our sheriff's department? I said, what do you mean? He said, I have 150 deputy sheriffs. Could you raise up chaplains that could ride with them at night? and pray for them and pray for their families and go on calls. So tonight, today in Calhoun County, there's chaplains in sheriff's cars and when they're going on a call, they got a Holy Ghost believer right beside them. Praying in the Holy Ghost, moving throughout culture. When they go on a domestic violence call, you have a minister right there with an official to stand there on behalf of the kingdom of God and see the manifestation of God's goodness. Our church members began to get a heart for opening small business. And so they started stepping out into the community and opening small businesses that can have an impact on the marketplace and begin to see transformation. One of our mayors, because, you know, God began to move supernaturally. One of our mayors, Chuck, was amazing. He was Episcopal and he came to me and he said, Kent, after this march, I need to know about that Holy Spirit stuff. (laughs) This is one of our mayors around us. And I said... Well, I don't, I can tell you what I know. And I told him and I laid my hands on him and he started shaking and vibrating under the power of the Holy Ghost. He started crying and shaking and he said, Ken, I am so sorry, but I have got to get out of here. Like, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at you. It's just, I have no clue of what in the world's happening to me. I've got to go somewhere and process this and just got up and left the church. Ten minutes later, he texts me. He said, Kent, what in the world did you do to me? I said, I text back. I said, what do you mean? He said, I got outside your church. And he said, I thought I better say something to God because I had just encountered God. And so I lifted up my eyes to the heavens and said, I didn't know what to say. So I 
thought, well, I'll just say something. He said, I opened my mouth and it sounded like Navajo Indians were talking through me. He said, what in the world is that about? God had filled the mayor with the Holy Ghost and power from on high. And on the day of prayer, he said, open up ye gates. Be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors and let the King of glory come into this city. Somebody shout yes. I was shocked. I was literally shocked to step into a realm outside the church where God would move like that. And so we became convicted. How do we keep coming to church every Sunday? Singing about how good God is. Singing about how great God is. Prophesying all these wonderful things. And five miles from us, they're dying of crack. They're dying of overdose. They're living in poverty. Children without fathers. And we're sitting within four walls trying to talk about how good God is. We just got convicted and troubled about it. And said if the church is the church, then we should be able to at least get out in this neighborhood and change the spiritual environment and see the kingdom of God manifest itself. So we did that. And so we just started working in our own community. And so it got pretty interesting after that because Chuck had prophesied in 2018 and given us a fire mantle. And he prophesied we would go to gates of cities and prophesy. And so we, we just started praying and asking God for a strategy. And we were sitting in a meeting and the man preaching said, somebody... Is going to take the fire of God to all 67 counties in Alabama. I said, Lord, man. Bless that man. Whoever's going to Alabama, we're going to pray for him. Lord said, that's you. And just like this, I thought, oh my God. This is what Chuck said. Two years later. This is what Chuck said. So... You know, Bev and I, I mean, we're just, you know, we're just who we are. So we just started thinking, well, how are we going to do this? And uh, so this was just before Tabernacles, and Chuck's taught us to celebrate Tabernacles. So, so we said, well, God, what do you want to do? He said, can you present the state of Alabama to me at Tabernacles? I said, what would that look like, Lord? He said, a representative from every county coming on your campus, you present them to me, I'll give each of them an angel, and they'll take it back to their counties, and when they step into their counties, the angel will begin to work and make the way. So I started looking for all the relationships I have in Alabama, and, and uh, you know, immediately uh, we came up with all 15 of them. And... Uh, you know, there's 67 counties. So, you know, I realized the Holy Spirit said he's the helper. He ain't going to do it. Here's a good lesson for somebody. I said, he's called the helper. That don't mean he's going to do it. That just means if you try to do it, he'll help you do it. Touch your neighbor and say, he'll help you if you'll just do it. So, Chuck, you wouldn't believe it. We set up our conference room with telephone. We were like a telemarketing. We just started looking up ministries in Alabama and randomly calling them, saying, hey, we found you on the Internet, and this is what we felt like God told us to do. And many said, we're too busy, and we've got... But, man, about every third call you'd get somebody said, man, I don't know who you are, but I just felt the Holy Ghost when you, talk, when you, when you said me... And the next thing you know, we had 67 counties in four days ready to stand before the Lord at Tabernacle. Now, it got really interesting. Bev and I wound up in Montgomery the day before Tabernacles at a wedding. And, and I was trying to say, Lord, we were so busy. What are we doing here attending a wedding and beautiful friends of ours? And, of course, we were... Thrilled to be there, but you just got all this stuff to do. And then it hit me. We're in the Capitol. Like, like we're supposed to be here today. 
So Bev and I went to the Capitol steps and prayed, and somebody said, hey, have you been to the Peace and Justice Museum? We said no, and they took us there, and we, we knew what God was doing. When we walked in, I'll show you this picture, there were 64 jars. Can I put that up, that slide, please? 64 jars. Can you help me with that slide? 64 jars. That slide. The one that's got 64 jars on it. I see it here, but I don't see it here. Ah, oh, thank you. Thank you. This is where 64 of 67 counties, we lynched our black brothers and sisters and children. And it's a museum in Montgomery honoring the 4,000 or more lynchings. And the Lord said, innocent blood is crying out in the land in Alabama. Not just from our black brothers and sisters, but our native brothers and sisters. And those that had gone before us. And Bev and I stood there and the Lord said, when you go to every county, I want you to redig the soil. And I want you to redeem the soil in each and every county of Alabama. And the next thing you know, God sent these two men. Next slide, Will, Will Ford and Matt Lockett. And Will came to Alabama with that black prayer kettle where for 200 years in his family, his, his, his forefathers that were slaves prayed laying on the dirt under that kettle so their masters couldn't hear them. Not praying for their freedom, but for generations' freedom to come. And the Holy Spirit, when He released the anointing to us, said our prayers will attach to the prayers of our ancestors' prayers. And what will happen in heaven, there will become a tipping point. And a tipping point in the Spirit will begin to... And you know what? We were doing this in Alabama before all this unrest. And we're not saying that we started all of this. But I'm telling you, I believe a tipping point hit those prayers in the bowls of heaven. And God began to do something supernaturally.